presentation. So let me share my screen first of all. Okay, so screen share. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Yep. Great, thank you very much. So uh My name is Alton Chalap, and I'm a, so a senior software engineer. Uh, I work as a software engineer for more than 11 years. I joined SoftServe two years ago, and uh, the technique, what I'm going to show you today, I learned at SoftServe, um, and I hope it will be useful for you as well. So today we are going to talk about service virtualization with Mount Bank. Uh, and here, here is our agenda. So in the first part, we are going to uh, um, see what, uh, what is service virtualization, uh, what is Mount Bank, and what are the main concepts of, of Mount, Mount Bank. Uh, in the second part, uh, we will go deeper a little bit uh, I'm, I will show you how to install it on your local development environment and how, and then how you can use it in a .NET test project. And least, last but not least, uh, I, in the third part, I will show you how to put all of these tests uh, onto a CI CD pipeline so they can run in your DevOps system. So this will be an introductory meeting. I won't go very deep into the details. Uh, I will give you the source at the end of the, the sources at the end of the presentation, so you can learn more about Bound Bank uh, and uh, uh, related uh, topics. I'm gonna explain. So uh, let's jump into the uh, topic. <laughs> so. Service virtualization. So I have a quote uh, by Brandon Byers. He is the father of Mount Bank. Uh, he wrote an, an excellent book about Mount Bank, and I used a lot of illustrations from that book. I also uh, read that book uh, to learn uh, how the how the system works. So. Uh, and the quote is, it doesn't matter how many services you have, when you have to release them at the same time, you have a monolith. So hopefully we will understand what he means under this, this quote in, in, in the next slide. So I will attempt to uh, explain this. So to understand what service virtualization is, uh, we need to understand. So First of all, we will talk a lot about microservices today, but service virtualization is not only for microservices. Uh, I will give some examples where other areas, where, which are the other areas where we can use uh, service virtualization. Uh, but yeah, it's it's very important uh, in in the field of microservices, and uh, to understand. Uh, why this is important, we need to understand uh, why microservices were invented. Uh, and the main reason is that large companies like Amazon, Facebook, uh, and others, they weren't always large. So they started to grow from, from they were really little <laughs> at, at the beginning when, when they started. And as they grow, uh, they realize that they have to release more code and to and to release more code uh, onto the production and faster do faster all of this they need more developers uh, and you probably understand what what does it mean when you have a single repository a single monolith project and you have a lot of teams <laughs> to work on that. So they started uh, making chunks of the of the big system, 
itself. So they started creating microservices and uh, put independent teams onto uh, different services so they can uh, they can uh, work uh, in parallel uh, on different staff. Uh, and of course, all of this uh, makes sense only if you have parallel teams when you have when you can release uh, their work in parallel as well. But um, you probably know when things come to testing, yeah, especially in a microservice environment, uh, things are not always easy because uh, as you will show you, microservices very often rely on other market services. And when you uh, test your market service, uh, it means that your service will won't work. So um, won't work properly if it has external dependencies. Uh, it's uh, it's okay for unit tests. Yeah, you, you can run your unit tests uh, without any problem, but if you want to do um, black box testing, when you test all the behavior of your microservice, you need to supply those dependencies. And uh, to connect to the real dependencies is 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 really hard. <laughs> and it uh, requires a big organ organization yeah, uh, across all teams. Uh, and basically you have to have a time frame where where at the end uh, you will release uh, services at the same time if you want to test them together with other services so that's where service virtualization comes into the uh, picture so service virtualization lets you do black box testing of the service or component by tightly controlling the runtime environment in which it operates. So what does it mean? Uh, you have tests, probably integration tests or component tests uh, or service tests. Uh, it doesn't matter how you call them. Um, you want to do a black box, black box test. So you um, probably have a, a, a REST API and uh, your test issues a request to your REST API. Your REST API does the job internally. And when it, uh, it is necessary, it goes to the, uh, the external dependency or other external dependencies or multiple of them. And then uh, uh, we replace those dependencies with a virtual dependency. Um, I hope so far it's uh, clear. Um, if you have any questions so far, please and let me know. But I think we can move on and uh, basically jump into the uh, into the other slide where. Um, I just want to give you a few more examples where service virtualization uh, can be useful. For example, it's not only for microservices, but it can be useful for, for mobile development when you where when you don't want to uh, uh, connect to your backend, for example, uh, or it can be useful for embedded development as, uh, as well. I worked on a project where, where we had a UI on an embedded device and uh, we had to build a fake backend basically in order to test uh, the UI in isolation. So uh, basically any piece of software that relies on an external service Service virtualization is, is a good thing uh, uh, that you can do in order to isolate your tests from external services. 
So what is MountBank? MountBank is an open source service virtualization tool that supports behavioral testing using the API test by test. So it has an API. Uh, you can configure uh, your virtual service endpoints using this API. And uh, you can then tell uh, your system under test to uh, connect to those uh, endpoints instead of uh, connecting to the real dependency. It also supports a scenario when uh, you use a persistent data store. So Mount Bank can uh, basically read data from a database uh, and 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 operate with with that data. So it can give you back that uh, data that it reads from the database. And also, it supports the scenario when it acts as a proxy. So um, this is for situations where you want to collect data set for testing. So it can connect to the uh, real dependency. Uh, record the responses from the dependency and store it in a database. And then later on, it can just call data from a database. But today, uh, I won't go into this part. I will only present the first, uh, the first um, scenario when we use its API to set up our test um, double. So, um, how Mount Bank works. So, so how does it look like the API uh, test by test uh, scenario? So you have your automated test or manual tests. Uh, you have Mount Bank somewhere uh, on the network available. Uh, then uh, you have your system that you want to test. You uh, basically set up Mount Bank to um, to give the proper uh, responses that you expect uh, to have during the test. And then you, uh, in your test, you uh, issue the request to your system under test, which uh, after that connects to the, uh, to the uh, endpoint, for example, uh, that is called imposter uh, in Mount Bank. So, uh, every, not the endpoints, but the servers itself, uh, they, they are called imposters. So uh, <clears throat> you can have many imposters, multiple imposters set, set up in Mount Bank, but you usually, during one task, you will use only one imposter. So the imposter, again, uh, it just represents the server that it listens on. So basically, if you think from a REST API perspective, it is the base address where our system under test <clears throat> will connect. So it's the, for example, the IP address and, and the port uh, on which it listens on. And then also you can have config file where, where you, <clears throat> sorry, excuse me when you can store all the con configuration files if necessary for Mount Bank. So um, I think we can move on the next slide. So um, how it, so this part, sorry, uh, this part when your system under test issues a request to your imposter, uh, this looks like this. So. Uh, your system under test goes to the imposter. Uh, in Mount Bank, you can configure uh, multiple stops. The stops are the, if again, if we think about a REST, a REST API perspective, they represent the endpoints uh, which you are going to mimic during the test. So you can set up multiple uh, stops at the same time and you can specify predicates uh, for those. So if your request uh, matches some of the predicates, 
the request will be routed to the uh, proper stub response and the stub will return uh, its response. So for a stub, you can specify one or more responses as you can see on the uh, slide. So this behaves basically as a ring buffer. So it always uh, moves to the next one, to the next response when when uh, you uh, already use the first. So let's say, for example, <clears throat> you uh, issue a request. Uh, the request matches with the first uh, stamp predicates. Uh, it gives you the response R1. So uh, it returns the R1 response back to your system under test. For example, if you uh, issue the same request again, then it will again match the first predicate. Uh, and the second time it will return the second uh, response, R2 in this case. Uh, and then later on, if you issue another request that matches a stop two, it will return the response that, uh, uh, that is defined at the proper buffer. So in most cases, when you, you when you when you are doing uh, uh, automated tests, uh, you will probably specify only one step and only one response, and you you will change this test by test. But this scenario uh, is, is it can can become very handy when you do manual tests. Uh, uh, and you can you can set all this up with a single request, as you will see later on. Okay, so I think uh, I will um, say a few words about the response generation, uh, but it is not really important just now. Uh, it this slide shows the internal structure of uh, Mount Bank. So after it, uh, your request matches a predicate, it moves your uh, response at the end of the ring buffer. So next time the, the, the second response will be returned. Uh, you, Mount Bank has a response res resolver, which is an internal thing, and you have to deal with it only if you extend uh, Mount Bank. Um, but this is an advanced topic, uh, and I think it, it's worth another <laughs> session uh, to talk about, but uh, not today. So uh, after that, uh, your response resolver uh, will uh, push uh, the, it's called a simplified JSON structure. This is basically what internally uh, Mount Bank operates with. Or, again, it is not important to understand for, for now, but just uh, <clears throat> to show you the big picture. So uh, it pushes forward this, the simplified JSON structure to the to the an other box called behaviors. Behaviors, I will show you later on. It's very interesting stuff. You can do, you can basically set up Mount Bank to generate uh, very dynamic responses based on the request. So after that, your behavior is processed. This simplified JSON structure, uh, uh, they are pushed to the imposter back. So this is your um, uh, interface box, basically. Where, where which is com is is communicating with your system under test, and it generates the final response uh, back to your system under test. So why um I was talking <clears throat> about so I was talking in a way that I I mentioned uh, uh, I mentioned. Um, HTTP and REST APIs, but uh, of course you can have a microservice or a, a, another system that is not on the HTTP protocol. Uh, you can basically use uh, F, uh, SMTP. Uh, Mount Bank supports 
out of the box, uh, the HTTP, HTTPS and uh, SMTP protocols. Uh, but also there are a lot of community <clears throat> extensions. So the Mount Bank can support um, even WebSocket protocol or any 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 other protocol you, you want. So it doesn't really matter. Mount Bank itself is a technology agnostic tool that is highly extendable. But we won't want uh, into this. We won't go into this today. Instead, uh, let's let's see how the installation looks like. Uh, and hopefully, all that I have explained will, will make more sense. So, um, installing Mount Bank is really easy. Uh, you have two options. If you have uh, no GS on your system, you can just install it as an NPM package globally, and uh, and that's it. And run Mount Bank, and you have a Mount Bank instance on your local system that is ready to listen to your request. But um, I will show you how 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 does it look like. As a .NET developer, you maybe will find more uh, comfortable to use a Docker container uh, because it, it is also really easy and I'm going to use a Docker container as well. So there is a, an official uh, package of the Mount Bank. Uh, the Mount Bank, there's a Mount Bank image uh, and uh, and that's it. So I think I should I should now bring up my um, terminal and show you how does it look like. So I have uh, uh, an Ubuntu distribution on my Windows system, and I already pulled. Uh, the uh, Mount Bank image, so just to not waste time, uh, what I have to do. So let's just um, what I have to do is just uh, start the container and to make sure that I don't have a container already. I just want to uh, show you that I have a browser and it currently uh, doesn't return anything. So after you have Mount Bank running inside a container or on Node.js, you uh, basically uh, will have to see its user interface. It, it has, it's not a user interface, but it is a built-in documentation. Yeah, so you can browse the documentation right on right uh, on Mount Bank's um, uh, web interface. So let's bring up the container again. Okay. This was my debugging session. Where is my other, here, here it is. So, sorry about that. So, uh, here's the comment that helps uh, us uh, bring up the mount bank inside a container and it that's it, it runs. So, in order to see it on the development system, you just have to type in localhost 2525. This is the default port when it uh, listens. And this is the, the port that you have to uh, use when you want to set up your mocked endpoints. So throughout this, this example and this, this presentation, I will talk about, um, I will use the HTTP protocol and I will uh, use REST APIs. So um, this is the homepage. You have the getting started guide, a lot of documentation, how, can, how you can use the API, how it works. 
it's really, really, really uh, convenient. And uh, finally, you have the link to the book that explains uh, all of this in, 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 in a really detailed manner. So um, it has an imposters page where you can see all your country set up uh, imposters. Uh, and you will see later on that uh, we will have, I think, only one imposter. And an imposter can have multiple stops, uh, which represent the co which will represent our endpoints where we will, we are going to connect. So uh, I think it's time to uh, make some requests. Let's show you how. How it looks like when you have already an imposter. So, in order to do that, I will bring up Postman. I already have created some uh, requests, so just to don't not waste time. So, let's create an impostor. Uh, and creating an impostor is as simple as sending a post request to the imposters endpoint of Mount Bank on localhost 2525. And that's it. You set up the port on which it will listen and you specify the protocol that it will use. So in this case, it will be HTTP protocol. So let's uh, issue this request. And as you can see, it is created. Uh, I gave back some information. Uh, if I go to the link, oh, okay, it will do a postman request. I don't want it. Uh, don't save. Let's go back to the uh, web interface. Let's refresh. And as you can see, we have an HTTP imposter that listens on port 4545. Okay, so um, it doesn't do anything <laughs> just now. So in order to in order to understand better uh, what we have to do with this, uh, let's jump into the code. Uh, and I will explain it. I have a um, sample project that basically um, we, we are going to test this project. We, we have only one endpoint in our REST API that is uh, dependent on another service, uh, which we are going to virtualize um, uh, later on. So in order to uh, understand better what we have to do, let's first of all see what we have, what we have to test. So I have this project. Uh, uh, this is a .NET 7 project. This is a web API. I'm using uh, minimal API. I don't know if you are familiar with it. This is this uh, this is available from .NET 6. So basically, I don't have to write my controllers. I just have to map my requests to the logic. Uh, what my um, endpoint has to do. And in this case, so I have a product service. So this product service is responsible uh, for returning product information. And I have an endpoint where uh, I will just get a product information uh, by giving an ID. So the endpoint should return a uh, JSON object with the product information. But this service has a dependency, uh, a theoretic de dependency uh, on another service, uh, which is called the uh, uh, inventory service. So in order, so let's say we, we have to display the um, available quantities in stock. Um, and you can get this uh, quantity from the inventory service. Uh, and that's it. You have the dependency. You have to uh, solve this, this, uh, uh, this problem with the dependency itself. So uh, basically, uh, 
this is all we are doing here. So we, if we get a request uh, to this endpoint with, with an ID, uh, our request gets routed to this logic where we get the product info, the base info from our database. Of course, I'm not using a database currently. It, this product info uh, comes from a fake repository. Uh, and this is just a <laughs> hard-coded uh, object, so nothing special uh, this time. So let's back to the endpoint. So I get the, the information from the product database, and now I need the available quantities from the inventory service, which is a separate microservice. So I'm using a... Uh, a client, an HTTP client, uh, that issues the request to the inventory endpoint, get uh, inventory service, get by product ID async. So I'm sending the ID, the product ID, and this um, inventory service should return the inventory information. And then I uh, glue this information together, what I received from the product database, and I return it to, uh, to the end user or the client side, whatever. So uh, basically, yeah, I think I need to speed up a little bit. So I hope you, it was clear so far. So I need to, uh, I need to have something that, that gives me this product uh, uh, inventory information. So in order to get this information, we will bring up uh, our uh, virtual service. Uh, I already prepared a request uh, to set up. So what we need um, our uh, inventory client. So our inventory client goes to inventory, uh, so goes to a server, um, and the inventory basic and product ID uh, endpoint. So we need to set up an endpoint that gives back the uh, proper result. So here is how we can uh, set it up. So um, in Mount Bank we have uh, uh, so together with the uh, with the uh, the imposter itself we can set up uh, the stops uh, at the same time. So in the stamp information, I uh, here I have uh, specified a default uh, response. So if my request doesn't match uh, with this predicate, so if my request goes somewhere else than inventory basic, it returns a 404 status code. Otherwise, if uh, my uh, request uh, is a GET request and uh, the path of the request starts with inventory basic, it gives uh, you this response, uh, which is a JSON uh, with this JSON body, which contains the product ID, the inventory number, and the available store. So uh, I also specified a behavior, which I mentioned earlier, so what I basically I'm basically doing here is I'm searching for a GUID somewhere in the URL anywhere, and if I found, I'm searching it uh, using a regex regular expression. Uh, if I found it, I put it into the ID variable. And when uh, my stop returns the response, uh, this ID variable will be put as the product ID. So it's just a fake uh, fake response uh, that dynamically returns the same ID uh, as you um, as you uh, requested from it. So uh, in order to have this running, I need to delete uh, my existing imposters if I have. So I just send this request and it says that, yes, I have deleted everything I had. No, I shouldn't have any imposters in Mount Bank. Uh, no, if I send this request, I should 
have an endpoint that returns uh, the, the, the required response. So um, let's make a test. So if I now issue this request, inventory basic product ID, I don't get anything back, back because I don't have it running yet. Uh, now let's set it up. It was created successfully. Let's get the information. And there we go. Here we successfully received the product ID, the, the product information with the same ID we uh, sent to the uh, to the imposter. So if I change this, I don't know, just the last letter for the send this, then in the response, uh, I got back D. So this is how uh, Mount Bank works. Uh, this might be a little bit unclear at the moment, but hopefully we will uh, have um, a library that helps us easy make it easier to do such requests and set up our endpoints before we go to test our application. But uh, for now, let's start this uh, product service, make sure that it, it works. So let's start it. started on another screen. I have also uh, Swagger set up for this uh, product service so we can quickly try if our service works. So I just will copy a GUID. I will place it here and execute the query. And there we go, we got back the product information together with the uh, stock quantity as we expected. So our product service works uh, as expected. So let's 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 write some tests because it's okay that we manually test, but we want to automate all of this. And in order to do this, uh, we we need to create a test project. It's really not. It really doesn't require a lot of setup. So hopefully I will be able to quickly go through this. So uh, I'm going to uh, create an X unit text, test project because I'm a big fan of it. Let's call it uh, project product service uh, component tests. Let's have it .NET 7. Um, okay, I don't understand what just happened. Uh, ah, basically, I think <laughs> okay. Yes, let's remove this. Probably I made a mistake somewhere. I didn't didn't remove something from my uh, task folder. So let me quickly do that. Um, product service. No, I want this product service. Yeah, I already have this. So let's delete. And you know what? Let's make sure I have the
I have the Quark solution opened, so I am going to reopen. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, let's read and the test logic. You know what? I'm I, I, I'm not gonna create it because I I see that um, we have you know. We have very few times, so I'm already. I already have a reference project. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open this one where I already have the test set up. Okay, and theoretically, I have everything I need here. Uh, but let's then go through the uh, test project. So uh, I created this test project called Component Tests. Uh, what I, uh, how I configured. So this is an X unit uh, test project. What I need to do to configure uh, and run this uh, microservice in an isolated environment, I, I. I use Web Application Factory. Web Application Factory comes with the .NET package called uh, uh, Microsoft uh, ASP.NET for MVC testing. So if you have this, uh, you will be able to uh, run the whole, uh, your whole uh, REST API and uh, you will be able to uh, send request, requests to it. So the other package, what we using here is uh, the mb.net package. This is a really important one. This helps us um, make uh, mobile bank connections easier. And I put a link into the, the end of the presentation. So you can read the documentation if you interested in this. So we are going to use this mb.net uh, stuff uh, to build our tests. So currently what I have in my product service factory is a really simple configuration. It's even commented out, this is a, a test for a database, a mocked database. Uh, but the only thing I have here is the base address. So I could specify a, um, my own config file here for the test, my app, set, app settings, uh, but I didn't want to do this. Uh, I just specified the base address for uh, our uh, external uh, dependency, uh, which will be used by the inventory client uh, in this uh, project. So. Hopefully that's clear. So this is the only configuration I made uh, and all this stuff will be automatically done via web application factory. So this is a class called product service factory. I created it here and I just have one method, configure web host. And this is the only configuration I'm doing here. Uh, I have a product and point tests class where my actual test sits. So it is um, it, it is a class fixture. Uh, um, and uses the product service factory to instantiate uh, our service that we are going to test. So if we get this factory uh, in, injected into our uh, test class. Uh, so we can create a cl client uh, 
to make requests to our service. And then we create a Mount Bank client. Uh, then when we have the Mount Bank client, we delete all the imposters to make sure that we uh, will be able to set up all uh, we need during the tests. Because if you have already endpoints defined in uh, in Mount Bank and you don't delete them, uh, Mount Bank will give you back um, errors then the, the stop or imposter already exists. So that's important to uh, clear, clear up Mount Bank before you, you run your tests. And here is a single test that uh, tests the endpoint itself. So it um, we have some um, uh, arrangements. So we set up what we uh, want to receive back, what we expect to get back from, from our uh, service, what we test. Uh, we create uh, uh, the imposter in Mount Bank here. Uh, and we use the mb.net library to uh, to do that. So the mb uh, mb.net library con con contains the Mount Bank client class. What we use in this test, so it has built-in methods to set up the imposters. So you just specify the port and how it should behave. So I've added a step uh, that um, has the predicate with this endpoint and the request should be a get request and it should return a JSON, uh, JSON object that represents this object. So, uh, and then finally, we, uh, we are going to issue the request to our service under test. We get back the response and I can remove this, it's not needed. Uh, and uh, basically we just do assertions as, as usual in tests. So let's um, make sure that this works, this test works. So I'm going into the test explorer. I have, yeah, I have another test class, but it contains the same test. I was playing with this. So uh, you will see that it will be, uh, it will be, so there will be two tests running, but uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, all tests should pass at this moment because we have uh, Mount Bank running in our container in our uh, local environment, and we have everything in this test project to set up the correct responses back from Mount Bank. And by the way, I. <laughs> I think I, I'm not pronunciating Mount Bank correctly, but I got used to it because we used this way <laughs> in our project earlier. So I think the, the proper pronunciation is Mounty Bank. So, but sorry, sorry for this. I, I always forget. Uh, okay, as you can see, all tests passed. If I uh, shut down my Mount Bank container, they shouldn't pass. They should time out. As you can see, this this is the case here. So uh, um, I think that's it about testing. It's really, really, really just a basic. I'm just scratching the surface of it. So it just shows you that uh, you you can automate the setup of your imposters and stops in uh, Mount Bank and you can do whatever basically you want with it. So you can set up any kind of answer and any kind of endpoints. Uh, we, we have a few minutes left. So I really quickly show you uh, how to, uh, how to uh, set all this up, how to run this on, on, uh, on a CI CD pipeline. Uh, I will use GitHub Actions. I will uh, push my uh, repo uh, into GitHub and I will run these tests on GitHub Actions. So what I need to do for that is, uh, yeah, I have a uh, already a repository on GitHub. Uh, basically, I have everything set up 
um, for that. Um, I already ran actions, uh, workflows uh, that contains my uh, instructions, uh, how to build and test. So what we want to do on GitHub is to push our changes into GitHub, uh, then um, automatically run the, the workflow, uh, which builds our uh, tests and our project, and then it runs the tests, and that's it. So uh, uh, what I have to do basically is just uh, go into git changes. I have already uh, uh, installed, uh, I, yeah, I installed, uh, I set up the uh, remote repository for this local one. So I just have to make some comments uh, removed. Um, whatever, I'm going to commit my changes and then I'm gonna push this right into the master repo. And uh, yeah, so what, before do uh, I will do that, I quickly show you the, the configuration and the steps required uh, to run this on GitHub Actions. And basically these are the concepts you should follow on any kind of uh, uh, DevOps setups, yeah, on other systems such as Azure DevOps, or I don't know, Team City. it should work uh, with a similar manner. So what I need to do, here is to, uh, when my workflow runs in GitHub, uh, I just check, check out the repo. Uh, then I set up the .NET version. I set up .NET version six. Uh, then I set up, uh, I restore all my dependencies, uh, then build the solution I have and just run the tests. And in order to, to um, set up a mount bank on, on the workflow, I just have to specify a service container. Uh, I gave it a name, mount bank. This is totally up to you. What name you give and specify the image, uh, what I also used on my local system, specify the ports. This is, these are the ports that you, your uh, mb.net library uses uh, to set up um, the stops for you. And this is the port where your actual uh, virtual service will listen. So your service will uh, send um, request on this port. So uh, basically that's it. So I have the service container. I have the steps I needed. All I need just to push this uh, into GitHub and let's see how it goes. So initiating push, hopefully it will work. Yep, successfully pushed. Let's go to GitHub. Um, not that browser tab, this one. Oh, as you can see, my uh, workflow automatically has triggered as I pushed because I ha have a push trigger on this workflow. And if we go into this, we can see we have only one, a single job and it is currently running. And this is the moment where our solution builds currently and the tests are running. So hopefully this will pass if everything was correct. There we go, it passed. So basically nothing special. You just have a mount bank in a container uh, you have set up the, the, the correct ports, the correct configuration, and, and that's it. You can work with it on the pipeline as well. And of course, there are possible other uh, more complicated scenarios. 
you can run it on run it right on the system uh, where your tests are running. You can build your own image if you build your own. For example, you can build your own protocol. We also build it uh, on our project where we used to secure uh, WebSocket connections. It's it's unfortunately not supported out of the box, but we uh, set it up. We extended Mount Bank a little bit and uh, we built our uh, Docker image for it and we used that the same uh, way as I used it here. We just pulled it from the registry and, and, and use it. So hopefully that's clear. I think that was off for me. I just really, I just scratched the surface of this and I couldn't uh, explain everything. I, I even couldn't explain everything that I wanted <laughs> because of the time, time constraints. But uh, hopefully that just gave you a quick introduction uh, how useful this tool can be. And uh, if you are interested in learning more about Mount Bank, you can use the links. And those links contain other links. So you can dive deeply into this topic. So I think that's it. Now time to questions if you have. Okay, thank you, uh, Zoltan. Guys, if uh, someone has any questions, please unmute and ask or use chat. Uh, question regarding competitors. Uh, did you consider uh, any other options before choosing uh, how you pronounce it, Mounty Bank, like Helk API or Postman, etc. Because like mm, I see there are some uh, strong size of Mounty Bank, like uh, rich configuration, but that becomes a disadvantage as well because you need to configure that we are just JSON. You don't mm -hmm. have UI, for example, if you rely, configure that on QA automation team or someone else, probably QA, they would prefer some UI. Like uh, Postman has possibility to create the same actually mock API. You mm -hmm. can do it in there. Uh, or if we compare it to fake API approach, I don't remember the exact name. I used it probably five years ago. So you can configure it and run it uh, uh, in scope of your test project. You don't require like node installed, etc. Uh, it could be mocked and configured uh, and run inside uh, that uh, web application factory uh, in .NET runtime. There mm -hmm. are such options as well. Uh, that's why I'm thinking about like mm, competitors and why did you choose this guy? Of course, yeah, there are competitors. There are uh, paid solutions as well. They are really, really feature rich. Uh, but first of all, for our purpose, it was uh, the capabilities that Mount Bank provides were, was just more than enough uh, because we didn't uh, need any UI, because we didn't do uh, manual tests for virtualization. For our project, everything was automated. Um, and manual test was manual tests used, uh, uh, I think real data. So, uh, and real dependencies. So even if you use service virtualization, it doesn't uh, completely switches off the need uh, of manual tests because it's, it, it always will be needed, but, but for our test automation needs, it was more than enough. And uh, we, what is more important, it is a free solution. It's it's not paid, it's open source. And, and... Mm, thanks, I think you answered my use? question. Yeah. yeah. And uh, by the way, uh, thank you for the presentation. It was well-structured, uh, good piece of theory, practice, and uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>